folks, uh, the next fallacy we're going to introduce to you is uh, what's traditionally been call called the straw man fallacy. Uh, I sometimes simply call it the straw argument. Uh, this is an extremely common fallacy in political rhetoric. So if you're looking for examples of the straw man fallacy, that's certainly a, uh, a fairly good place to look. Now, <clears throat> the definition goes something like this. The straw man is a fallacy of misrepresentation. Representation in which the arguer presents a version of his opponent's argument and then proceeds to argue against it. Now the key here is, I said, he presents a version of his opponent's argument. The problem is, it's what? It's not his opponent's actual argument. It's a lesser, a weaker, a distorted version of his opponent's position. Now the reason we call it a straw man is, just like if I set a scarecrow up here, I could just knock him down just like this. However, you put a real person there who's uh, a bit stronger and most likely stronger than me, and I try to do the same thing, of course, uh, good luck with that. So the strategy of the straw arguer is to say, my opponent argues such and such. And then you proceed to discredit that particular argument. Now the reason why it's a fallacy is you haven't actually addressed the opponent's real argument. And if I might be so bold to give you something like a diagram to represent how this works, Let's call this my opponent's argument. We can call it A, just for brevity's sake. Now, what I will do as the opponent of A is, I will, call, I will set up an argument, let's call it uh, A, uh, you know, we'll, we'll call it A sub lowercase a. The thing is, an effective straw argument fallacy will do the best it can to pick kernels of truth about what the opponent believes, but then to distort it, you know, misrepresent it, make it sound as ridiculous as you possibly can. In other words, you make it sound like only a complete idiot would accept the argument. Now the problem is, If I only attack A sub A, which is the straw argument that I created of my opponent, what I, have I in effect not done? Yeah, I failed to address her actual argument. Does that make pretty good sense? The reason why it's a fallacy is because I've never actually addressed the opposition's actual argument. I've set up a dummy version of it, and I've beaten on it, rather than actually taken on my opponent's actual argument. Now, a couple signposts for you. How can you tell a straw argument from a legitimate rendering of the opponent's position? Well, odds are, do you think that people tend to treat their, op their opponent's arguments fairly? No. As a matter of fact, people will tend to think their opponents are stupid. In other words, they don't even think they have any intellectual credibility. So the fact is, there's plenty of people who will probably think that their straw versions of their opponent's arguments are their actual arguments. 
they'll set up this ridiculous sounding argument that isn't their real opinion, or position, and then they will argue against it. Now, it's very frequent that if an opponent is presenting their opponent's position, that they're most likely not to treat it fairly. That's one signpost of a potential straw man. Now, my second signpost of a potential straw man is this. If the argument seems too absurd for anyone to hold, then it's probably not their real position. If the position seems too ridiculous for anyone to hold, then it's probably not their real position. Those are two ways of detecting straw men. Now, there's another easy way to detect straw man, although it's probably not that easy because it puts a great burden on you. The more informed you are, about current issues and the kind of positions and arguments that people take on particular current issues, the more likely you are to know what the actual arguments are. And if you know what the actual arguments are, then you will be able to spot, well, oh, that's a straw man, very easily. Now, I'll give you an example. This is going way back, though. You might note that many people who self-identify as conservatives tend to feel how about the environment and environmentalists? Yeah, they tend to be fairly negative towards them. My, my wife's aunt, yeah, I guess I can go on record saying this, God love her, she's wonderful. But anyway, yeah, super nice. But the fact is, she thinks that environmentalists worship nature and hate God. Guess what? I know plenty of Christian environmentalists. They're not worshiping nature. They just think that we ought to what? Yeah, we ought to take care of it. Because after all, you know, we all live downstream. You've heard the old cliché. Or another famous one, this is uh, what I call the Rush Limbaugh uh, uh, anti-environmentalist straw man. He's, ah, the EPA and these environments, em environmentalists, they want to save every last spotted owl. Now, in portraying their argument as wanting to save every last spotted owl, he has portrayed environmentalists as, I'll use the word, extremists. They hate civilization. They hate industry. Well, guess what? Are there some environmentalists who hate industry and hate civilization as we know it? Yeah. Yes, but they're not what? They're not all of them. Yeah, they're not the mainstream of people who self-identify as environmentalists. Most people who self-identify as environmentalists don't want business to go away. They don't want iPods to go away and iPhones. They don't want to go back to picking nuts and berries. What they do want is responsible, sustainable development. In other words, their, their actual position turns out to be fairly moderate. But to portray the extremist camp of the movement as the mainstream of it, in effect, ends up creating a straw argument. It would also be the same way if uh, you know, a, a, a member of the industrial workers of the world said that all mainstream American politicians hate workers and want us all to be slaves. No, it's just that most mainstream politicians understand that the way politics works, and I sound like I'm defending them, and I tend not to want to defend them, but the reality is, the working class has got to be able to play ball with whom in a system like ours? The owning class. In other words, if you want political change within the system, it, can't, it, it tends not to be able to be done with you know, sweeping radical changes. It needs to be done piecemeal. And granted, I don't think that people who promote policies that members like me of the working class don't like want me to become a slave. I think they don't always work towards my interest. 
But you notice by trying to portray them as wanting to turn the whole working class into a bunch of slaves, what I have done is I've presented their argument in the least favorable light that you could imagine. If, if their position is they want to make all American slaves, well, who would go along with that? The problem is I am misrepresenting their position. Same way if, if I had said, the nuclear industry only cares about making money. They could care less if all the people of Japan, you know, become radioactive because of these nuclear accidents. Well, if I portray anybody who's pro-nuclear energy that way, I might be misrepresenting their position. And I hope I've made it clear in these examples. If the position seems extremely inhumane and extremely extreme, then it's probably a straw version of their argument and not their real argument. Of course, the other, and I'll reiterate, the other signpost. The other signpost is, if it is, if it is an opponent presenting the other guy's position, they're not likely to give it you know, you know, fair treatment. They are more likely to, uh, you know, to present the, the opposition as a straw argument. Thanks.